Well, welcome to another moment or episode with our Lift Church podcast, and I have another amazing conversation. We're in season two, and I've been talking about this for some time. I am enjoying the season where I get to bring in people that I do life with and just share conversations with the broader Lift Church audience and those that are tuning in. And so today I want you to lean in. As we say every time, we would love for you to subscribe and follow these things on the different social media platforms, uh, whether you're listening or watching on YouTube or maybe listening on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, please subscribe to it. And then we tell everybody to go to the socials, Lift Church FL, and follow along with the socials so you can see all the things that are happening here at Lift Church. But today I'm honored and privileged to have the amazing Jake and Ashby with me today. And you don't, you haven't got to know them like I have because uh, they're newer to our team, uh, brand new youth and young adult pastors. And uh, it is a gift to spend time with you today to have these conversations and to chat about all things Jake and Ashby. The world needs <laughs> to know you and um, me having some time getting to just even just moments ago chatting and hearing about you is every time it's just, I, I really just grow more and more fond of you two and your two boys. We got to go away this uh, past weekend. I don't know when this will air, but uh, this happened at the end of September and um, your two boys were with us. We went to a video arcade and I was once again, a five-year-old boy running around with my friends playing video games with your boys and I genuinely have enjoyed you too. But today I want to get to know you and I want them to get to know you as I ask you some things. And so the way I start off is I just say, tell me about life in the beginning, like growing up, where were you born? Tell me about your home lives, good, bad, and ugly, and the things that have shaped you. Because I think when we understand that, it helps us to see your heart now. Like it, it, that, Those things make us who we are in ministry as grown men and women. And so I'll start with you, Jake, and then we'll hear from Ashby. But just tell me about the beginning. Where, where's Jake from, and how did uh, you grow up? Yeah, man. Um, so I'm born and raised here <clears throat> in South Florida, um, I always say I was born in Port Charlotte because Northport didn't have a hospital. Um, <laughs> but born in Port Charlotte, lived in Northport pretty much my whole life um, until I moved to Virginia Beach um, where I met my wife. But yeah, yeah, man, um, growing up in Northport, it, we had a good, good family life. Mom and dad were together. My dad ran an auto body business um, and my mom worked for the schools. OK, um, so they were they were around pretty much all the time. Did your uh, parent like, how many siblings do you have? Yeah, so I have uh, three brothers. Okay. I fall smack dab in the middle. You're the middle kid. Yeah. Okay, man. that helps me to know yeah. you already, my friend. <laughs> middle kids are to a learn. challenge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, just to make it even better, yeah. I got a complex because I was the youngest okay. for seven years. Okay. And me and my brothers were, my oldest brothers were all two years apart, like yeah. evenly spaced. Okay. And then comes my little brother seven years later. Okay. So I was happy as can be as the youngest. Yeah. Living it up. Got sure. everything that I wanted. Got all the attention. <laughs> and then and the little brother just gone. Just like that. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, we love and, you, AJ, though. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I love, love my yeah, little brother. I mean, just when you were first born, I had <laughs> <Yes>. some tensions. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It took, took a while. Yeah. But. Now it's all brothers. All boys. All yeah. boys. Yeah. Tell me about growing up in a house full of boys. It's a whole lot of... T do you guys like close or you fight all the time or everything in between? What's that like? Yeah. So we're close now. Okay. We're all very close now. Uh, and there's a mutual respect, I think, just growing up as brothers. Mm. Um, you kind of see where each other, were, where we were mm. uh, growing up now from an outside perspective. But when we were in it, mm -hmm. it was very tense. We were at each other's throats all okay. the time. Uh, constantly fighting. Um, I was more of the the black sheep of the brothers. Okay. Uh, how so? Like, how, how's that? Yeah. So my two older brothers had very similar interests. Okay. They hung out with each other. Um, they really liked gaming. They liked cars, uh, you mm -hmm, know, the, mm -hmm. the nine yards. Uh, where I was more the athlete. Okay. So starting around five years old, I started wrestling competitively. That's awesome. Um and my brothers wanted nothing to do with sports. Yeah. So they did like, you know, your traditional youth soccer, 
um, baseball here and there, but it wasn't for them. They just didn't really enjoy it. Uh, where the wrestling was, I started and I was good. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for my parents to invest in it. Okay. Um, and yeah, that it just kind of started to bring a, maybe more so from just my perspective. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm seeing my parents are spending a lot more time with me. Mm. That little bit of distance yeah. between us. Um, it wasn't until we were older, you know, you get in a couple fist fights with somebody. And yeah. as guys, that kind of gains a little bit of respect, yeah. uh, at least for brothers. Once we had a couple of those tussles, yeah. uh, it changed everything. Yeah. You know, we were really quick to be on each other's sides and support each other um, from those moments. It is very natural. My brothers, I had two brothers as well. I was the oldest, but that was, is a very natural thing. Boys do it. We fight, we get over it, but it, it solidifies some bond. Respect yeah. comes out of that. It's weird. I don't understand it. It's in the way we've been designed. Yeah. I'm going to blame it on that. <laughs> so I understand. Were you, now, were you guys a religious home or did you go to church or was this not part of? Yeah. So my mom, uh, my mom grew up Catholic Mm -hmm. uh, she's from Buffalo, New York. And my dad grew up more of a Baptist background. Okay. He's from Denver, Colorado. They moved here in the mid eighties, okay. um, down to, to Northport and neither of their parents really forced them to go to church, mm. which they then, when they got married, they're like, Hey, we have different backgrounds. We're not going to force our kids to go to church. Yeah. If they want to go to church, they can go, but we're not, we're not forcing that on them. Yep. Uh, so no, didn't grow up in church at all. We were the traditional CEOs mm -hmm. when it comes to church, yeah. you know, your Christmas and Easter, Easter only. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so those were the times that we were in church. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that definitely didn't grow up in church. It wasn't until later on in my life from yeah. my own um, seeking that yeah. I ended up in a, in a moment of church. Well, so my wife, similar to that, uh, great family. We, we, we love them. I love my in-laws a bunch, but they didn't go. Uh, to church wasn't a religious home, but good people, you know, just a good family life. Their family's very close to this day. And so you're playing sports, you're growing up, good home, brothers, um, and then you get into your teenage years and stuff. Walk me through. Were you rebellious? Were you, uh, uh, how rebellious? I, I think that's the better way of saying it because all of us, every teenager to some extent is testing those fences, right? Mm. And I think it's important, especially you now as a youth pastor. Yeah. You now, you know, leading young adults and kids going through that season. What were you like in that season? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, uh, we'll do it maybe PG for your, your mom if she listens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was the, uh, I was the person more or less that other parents would warn their kids about. Okay. You were that guy. Yeah. Okay. So, and not necessarily by my own doing, mm. um, I just fell into that crowd and mm. we had talked earlier about how in your teenage years you have you know, at school, there's people judging you. You feel like at home, you have people judging you. If there's tensions with your brothers or uh, your family and trying to impress people and everything that you're doing. Mm. And I I just got to a breaking point where I was like, I'm, I don't care if I impress a single person. Yeah, I am just going to live and I'm going to live to the fullest. And if you're in my way, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> uh, and it, yeah, it was a crazy Mm. crazy time of my life. Yeah. I looked for satisfaction in anything and everything. Mm. Um, I, I tell, told people uh, when I first got saved, I lived a, a full life wow. before I even met Jesus. Wow. And I can tell you in all of those things, nothing compares. So good. Nothing compares. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, you're tasting all the world has to offer as a young man, uh, footloose and fancy free running and saying, I don't, I don't care about anybody but myself, which is natural teenagers and your selfishness creeps in and it brings you to a point where you, you're trying all those things. And then inevitably that, how does that end? So let's talk about like that transition of you know, your sports, good home, but then you hit this stage where you're just like, I'm going to live life to the fullest. How, does that come to a crashing halt? Does that, what, what does that, lead you to? Yeah. So it, I mean, eventually it led me to, to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I hit rock bottom. Okay. And I had, there was a couple, a couple like monumental moments mm. 
in my life that were hard, for lack of better terms. Yes, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. Uh, when I was around seven years old, um, I was away for a wrestling camp, and I was molested. Oh man! Um, and it was it That's was a tragic. tough tough thing to do as a kid because you blame yourself. Mm. Wow! And you're like, I know that wasn't right. Wow! Jake, I don't it's crazy. know really what happened until you're older and you start yeah. to think back on it. Um, and that kind of put me in a weird funk as a kid already wow. where I was like, man, everything's my fault. Mm. So then you start to look for things to make yourself feel better. Yeah. Um, and then when I was, uh, around 13, I just, it turned into a really tough depression. Yeah. You know, I was a eighth grader and I'm struggling with depression cause mm. I just, I don't feel like I have anyone that I can talk to. Uh, although my parents were there and they wanted to talk to me. I just didn't feel like I could talk to them because yeah. I didn't want to put my problems on anybody else. <laughs> so I, I got to a couple couple times in my life where I actually tried to take my own life. Wow. And it wasn't until I was 19, and it's third time uh, I'm in this position. I was telling my wife just the other day, I was having this memory that came back to me as we passed this gas station. I was passing this gas station and it reminded me, I'm 19 years old. I'm hanging out with a friend of mine and uh, one of my ex-girlfriends. And we just were just being dumb, you know, just making poor decisions and got very drunk, hmm. you know, and that wasn't out of the normal for us. And I found myself stealing the keys to her car and <laughs> driving to a gas station because I was craving cigarettes. Hmm. And I had to have it. And as I pulled into the gas station, there were about seven cop cars parked right there. And I just, I sat there and I was like, man, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. I'm 19 years old. Like I shouldn't be in these situations I'm putting myself in. Yeah, Something's going wrong. And God willing, I didn't get in an accident. I didn't hurt anybody. Um, I made it back to the house and I just got, I got out of the car and collapsed sure. and just, completely broken and just reflecting on my life choices, the decisions that I made that get me into that place. And I, I went back inside and I was fully convinced that night I was going to take my life. Hmm. And I pleaded with God. I was like, man, I don't know you, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like wow. I, I don't even know where to go with this, but I don't like where my life is. Hmm. And there's got to be a bigger plan or a bigger purpose. Hmm because this isn't it. And all the choices that I've made, all the decisions that I've made, it, they're not, they're not benefiting in any way. Like it, it was that empty, that counterfeit. Sure, yeah. Um, and I, I pleaded with him. I said, Hey, if you actually have a plan mm. for my life, mm. if you have a purpose for me, I'll wake up in the morning. And if I wake up in the morning and it says, is so, uh, so silly looking back, but at the same time, it's not, I, I said, I'll go to church. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll do that thing that, you wow. know, is so taboo yeah. at the time. <laughs> and yeah, man, I, I woke up in the morning and I had had a, a noose that I had created, um, and ripped it off. And I just remember gasping and I was like, yeah. okay, like I'm actually here still. Holy cow. I'm, I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to find a way I'll yeah. go to church. Like there's clearly, there's a reason why I'm here. Wow. And I had reached out to a friend and, you know, they invited me and it took another two weeks or so mm. still of internal like battle. Yeah. And finally I walked into that church um, and it was like, I felt like I, people, they, I've heard people say like, I don't want to go to church cause I feel like I'll combust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The building will fall down. All yeah. Like I said, yeah. And that was me. I was like, I, but at the same time I was like, I've tried everything else hmm. and I walked in and I was like, I'm, I am broken mm -hmm. and I have tried everything that I know how to try. So whatever happens, happens. And I was welcomed. Yeah. You know, like I, I had people who wanted to hang out, never met me before. <laughs> and they're like, dude, welcome to our group. Yeah. Like, how, 
How wow. are you? Who wow. are you? Tell me about yourself. And I was like, well, you want to know about me? Mm. Why, why do you want to know about me? Like, yeah. But then the most important thing, I sat through a service and the pastor at the time, his name is Josh Newton. And I name him specifically because he does, like he was a pivotal person mm. in my testimony. Yep. We've talked about like, I think me and you personally have talked about like that one person. Yep in your testimony. And this man, he preached the gospel. And I just remember like in my mind, I was like, man, I've, I've done my fair share of things for highs. Yeah. I've never felt this before. Wow. It was just a sense of inner peace, like full on throughout my body. And he gave an altar call moment. And <laughs> I'll tell you, my hand went up so quick. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever this is, let's do it. Yeah, I want this. And from that moment on, like he, he kept meeting with me. He kind of took me under his wing. Yeah, and mentored me, got me, you know, would give me books to study and wow, ask me questions and coffees and really just followed through up intentionally. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good word. Wanting to know who I was. Yeah, you know, and that that's kind of shaped how I see ministry. Yeah, so good. You know. But I know I've rambled. That's what so. we want, man. That's what I want people to hear that. I'd just first say thank you for sharing. I mean, some of that stuff is is deep and heavy. Like, that's heavy stuff. And I think it gives people some permission to find their safe spaces to navigate those things, you know, from, from sexual abuse and uh, things like that that lead you on a trajectory towards depression, uh, suicide, and attempting that. Um, that that's just a journey, but I do like, there's so many things in it that, um, I want people to hear They're like, you said his name is Josh. Yeah. Like, wh like, who are you a Josh to is where my mind starts to go. Cause I've watched you, those things shaped you in such a manner that I, I've watched you reaching back that way. In, in, a, in a way of rescuing people mm -hmm. from the things you've faced. And I think there's something beautiful about um, not letting those messes define us, but rather propel us into that purpose um, where you're like, God, if, if, you, if I wake up tomorrow and you have a purpose for my life, um, you know, I'm going to church and I want to follow you and, and, yeah, it's, it's a special thing to hear that. The Holy Spirit grabbing a hold of you in those ways. Can, can we just acknowledge the fact of how you're in the darkness and the Holy Spirit was there the whole time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you, right. like that's just so powerful for me when I hear those testimonies, bro. And, I, and I've been in dark spaces, different ones, of course. It's like I need people to hear that. I want people to hear that in your testimony. Um, thank you. That's what I would say yeah. in that, that opening portion of your time. And Ashby, um, you, because, you know, shortly after this, and we'll get to it, you all collide worlds and, mm -hmm. and you know, the Lord introduces you to, but let's start at your beginnings and um, where you're from, what was like growing up and uh, just kind of take us on that journey of who you were. Yeah, I was born and raised in Tawano, Virginia, which is a really small town. Okay. It's 30 minutes outside of Williamsburg, Virginia. Yeah. Um, raised by a single mama. Mm -hmm. She um, and my dad got divorced when I was two. Okay. So my mom stayed in Tawano and then my dad moved to Charlottesville. Um, and it was just me. So I didn't have any siblings. Okay. It was just me and my mom and in our little home at 10101 Squires Way, Toyota, <laughs> Virginia. Um, and it was good. I had a good childhood. We weren't in church or anything like that. We okay. did the CEO as well. Yeah. It was just Christmas and Easter. Um, my mom's parents were in Williamsburg, so I had like them around. I always went to their house. My mom um, worked for a little bit, and then she stopped working when I was in like kindergarten to take care of them. Okay. So I was over at their house a lot. Um, and yeah, I think my childhood was great, but it was very lonely at the same time. Okay. So um, I would always crave to be at like friends' houses. I yeah. loved big families. Like my best friend Maddie really? is one of four. 
and I would be at her house like every weekend. It was mm. just the most amazing thing to me. And <laughs> even now, if I'm being honest, like family dynamics yeah. are so interesting to me. Okay. Like I'll like just be a fly on the wall and like watch how like siblings interact because yeah. I just never had that. Yeah. His family is different because they're all boys, but I grew up with all girls yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Like all my cousins were girls except for one Okay. on my dad's side. And then all my cousins were girls girls except for two on my mom's side. So okay. it was a, I would say like a girl dominated family <laughs> for yeah. sure. Okay. Especially growing up with a single mom. Yeah. Um, and then, so I went to a private Catholic school for 10 years. Oh, wow. Yep. Grew up in a Catholic, like the Catholic religion. Yeah. Um, and then in high school, I ended up going to public school, okay. which was good. Um, I enjoyed that. And then just very like, didn't know my identity mm. to be honest, like in that time. Okay. So, um, I ended up going like in and out of relationships. Mm. I would like drink every weekend. Yeah. Um, I got, I ended up getting pregnant when I was 15. Oh, wow. And so that was like its own journey. Um, did not keep the baby. Mm -hmm. So that was hard. And mm -hmm. I didn't end up telling my mom until way later. Wow. Um, so she had no idea. And then I went through high school just partying. If I'm being really honest, I loved my life like yeah. before Jesus, yeah, before yeah. I knew, like I was the type of person that was like, I'm having fun. Like, this is fun. My life is good. Yeah. Um, I had like boyfriends on and off. I just drank all the time. Yeah. And then I came to church when I was 18 okay. and I was following a guy who I had just broken up with. I was crazy, but I was following a <laughs> guy that I had just broken up with. You were, st you were being a stalker? I mean, I wouldn't okay. call it like stalker, what would but you like call it? more like <laughs> I broke up with you, but like I want you to know what you're missing out on. I think I that's was crazy. called stalker, but okay. I was crazy. <laughs> anyway, so I, I went, <laughs> okay, maybe I was. I don't know. <laughs> now I would not recommend any girls to do yeah. that. Now I would say that would be a little stalkerish. <laughs> but um, I went to church and literally God radically changed me. Wow. Like I was going in it being like, I don't, I don't need this. Like my life is fine. I'm having fun. I'm mm. partying to that night salvation call and I was like teleported down there wow. um, it was like I just knew that's what I needed and it was a 360 move after that like I stopped drinking I started going to their college there um at the church that I was at yeah I moved eventually to wow. the area and it was like a complete change um in my life so yeah. it was pretty big I just a few things. One, I, I love that you said I loved my life. Yeah. That's not enough testimonies uh, say the truth of like there was good in it, like pleasure wise. If yeah. we were completely removing the idea of sin. Totally. You know, it's just well, I enjoyed the eat, drink and be merry's of yeah. the way I was living. And so I think that the, somebody listening and, and even for me as your friend, it's like, I appreciate that. Yeah. That it's like, yeah, there is an, it, it, it's, it's temptation. Right. And because there is a good and a pleasing aspect to the things that are out there in the right. world, what we know, and, and, you know, Jake's testimony kind of expedited the feeling. And if the Lord would have continued with your trajectory and given you more space, he had a different plan, Right. but you would have eventually gone, okay, this is empty. Right. Exactly. You, everybody gets there. It's just when you're in it though, until that moment comes, yeah, it's it's like fun. And I again, just the same as him, you guys have lived through so many things. And that, I think that's one of the reasons I really value like talking to you. There's a maturity in you, um, you know, losing a child, yeah. um, having those moments at such an early age. Yeah, um, It shapes you. I appreciate you being willing to share that. And uh, I pray if there are uh, women hearing those things, you know, especially young women, um, that if they're navigating things in life that, you know, they would find the people in the right spaces to get the support they need in that too. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's a, just the things that you have been through, what the enemy meant 
maybe to tear you down. Mm -hmm. God is used to make you very solid. Like you said, it was like, as soon as I ran into Jesus because of my life, I teleported. Yeah. Like I'm, that's the thing. Yeah. That's what I've been after. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that that's a beautiful testimony that brought you to that space. And so you, you both end up at an altar choosing Jesus mm-hmm. right prior to at an altar saying I do. So how do, how do you two come together as a couple? Tell us maybe a little bit about that. No, story. no, hold no. on. Uh, gonna wait, wait, just gonna say. She, she asked me out. <laughs> You're such an old man when you say that. <laughs> she did. Yeah. So, well, okay. it seems like yeah. she was stalking you. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. Yeah. I will say when I became a Christian, I did not date for seven years. Yeah. Seven years? Seven, seven years. years. Completely no dating. No dating. No. And oh, is this something the Lord led? It just felt a conviction you had. It was it, the hardest seven years of my life. Wow. I would say it was both. At okay. first, I was like, oh, yeah, God, I won't date for like two years. I'm in Bible college. I won't date for Bible college. Okay. And then it was like, okay, three years, I'm out of Bible college. Okay, four years. Okay, yeah. God, like, what's going on? And it just <laughs> it, it just continued for seven years. It was wow. very, very hard and a interesting walk. But eventually it led me to Jake and I feel like that's literally God ordained. So 100%. I love that though. Yeah. That you were, you know, willing to do that in a world that presses uh, value in the relationships and things and and that fear of missing out of what that could be like and your, your steadfastness and choosing what the Lord was getting. I'm, yeah, kudos. I think that's a great piece of the testimony. Seven years. Is that the number of perfection mm. before you met the Lord this had to fine young me man? Before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I know. she asks you out. Tell me about this story, though. How she yeah. asked you out. Okay. So she she was talking about the time, uh, the seven years in preparation, you know, for, for yeah. all of yeah. For yeah. all of him. <laughs> she, needed, his glory. she needed seven years to get ready for me because <laughs> I was a gonna, mess. You are going to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I was a man. You were super humble. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So my like part, part of the whole, how we even ended up to in the same state is crazy. So I was, I had backslidden yep. after this amazing moment yeah. of I'm saved and I'm chasing after Jesus. I had a moment where I kind of fell back into old habits and due to convictions and not really understanding the love and grace of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can't, I, there's no way I can be a Christian. Mm. There's no way. Like I just, I just did that. Like that doesn't make me a Christian. Wow. And the guy, Josh Newton, that I was telling you about, he had reached out to me. I was on my way to do a drug deal mm-hmm. and he called me at 11 o'clock at night and he said, Hey man, Um, I need a, I need a ride from the airport and you're the only one that I know that would be up at this time. I was like, (laughs) all right. Yeah. Yeah. I can postpone, you know, (laughs) whatever I'm doing. My business ventures. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And I'll, uh, I'll come get you. And I picked him up from the airport and we sat in his driveway. He's now moving. Um, and he said, Hey man, like I'm, I'm moving up to North Carolina. If you want to get away from here, and just start over, you can leave with me. The truck leaves tomorrow at 3 p.m. Wow. It's like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning at this point. Wow. And uh, just another one of those moments where I was like, I, you know what? Like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. What's the worst thing that happens? I end up back in Northport. Hmm. You know, hmm. like it didn't work and I'm home. Yeah. So I went home. I t- uh, wrote a note to my parents because they'd see it on their way to work in the morning that, hey, I'm, I'm moving. Holy cow. Um, <laughs> Threw all of my stuff in black trash bags and my two surfboards and packed it in his truck and left. Wow. We arrived, we were on our way to North Carolina. That was the goal. Yeah. I was like, hey, North Carolina is my home now. This is where I'm going to live. <laughs> You're full send kind of guy, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, oh, full send. No, <laughs> no holding back. I love it. And uh, on the way up there, I think he started to realize, oh, shoot, like I'm committing to... Mm-hmm. taking care of this guy. Yeah. And he was like, ah, oh, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd say no. Yeah. And, and literally though. Yeah. So he, we like, and through conversation, he was like, Hey man, like I think North Carolina is probably going to be the same thing as Northport to you. Mm-hmm. But there's this place in Virginia beach 
that I think might be really beneficial for your life. Mm -hmm. He's like, there's a Bible college there and there's the church that I got saved in. Um, If I can find you a place to stay, would you be open to going there instead of North Carolina? And I was like, dude, at this point I'm in the car. Like, yeah, (laughs) yeah. like whatever happens, happens. And on the drive up, he found me a place to stay for free. Um, He gave me his car. Are you serious? Got me into the college, the Bible college, and got me a job. Wow. So like I went from, I have, I literally know nobody. Yeah. I, I've never been in Virginia. I didn't know Virginia had a beach, you know? <laughs> like I, I grew up in Florida. Florida's yeah. got the beaches. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So we get there and the day that we got, we, it was a, there was a big conference happening and he's like, hey, let me show you your new home. Hmm. Let me walk you around the church. And he used to work there, so he knew how, like, where everything was. And we're walking out of the children's ministry room, like, going down the stairs. And along comes Ashby. <laughs> <laughs> she starts walking up the stairs. Yeah. And So you're just getting a tour first time there. First time. And you pass by your future bride. I'll tell you what. Okay. <laughs> He's such a schmoozer. Yeah. I, I purposely said this. So that in moments like this, I could repeat it and not be lying. Yes. She start, She walked past me and I stopped and I went, wow, God, that was an angel. <laughs> Verbatim. And like just stopped. And I was like, wow. And as she walked past, she was going upstairs and that's where all the pastor's offices were. Yeah. So I was like, oh, she's, she's a pastor's wife. Yeah. She's married. She's out of my league. Not going to happen. Yeah. And yeah, then like I said, she asked me out. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's your side of the story? Did you, how did you ask him out? Because I, I think there's more to this. There's definitely yeah. more to it. So, a we, girl for seven years of no dates just doesn't go, oh, uh-huh. this guy is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I will say, <laughs> when he came in, I did notice him and I was like, wow. I've never okay. never seen him before in my yeah. life. And I'm like shoving balloons in the pastor's trunk and they're like flying everywhere. And he's like walking by and I'm like, oh, keep your cool. Um, but we, I invited you to a movie like Shit. for a group. I, yeah. So like I'll, I'll preface this. I do say that jokingly. Yeah. She asked my friend to ask me to go to a movie of like 30 people. She invited no, you no, to no. the young adult <laughs> movie night? It yeah. was better. Yeah. It was definitely the Christian. My friend asked his friend <laughs> okay. to ask yeah, him. Yeah. So they came to the movie yeah. and he was late, which I should have known that my entire life after that would be late <laughs> everywhere we go. Oh, dear. <laughs> this time, it wasn't my fault this time. It was not. <laughs> I was ready to go. Yeah, that's My so ride funny. Wasn't, <laughs> and so you go on this first thirty-person group date, <laughs> literally. Yeah. And how how do you how long do you date? How do you end up ask popping questions? Like, how does this lead to marriage? Yeah, yeah, you go. Yeah, so the, I mean, that date literally wasn't a date. It was a. Uh, it was like going to church and mm-hmm. sitting on office, opposite sides of the, of the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only time that we got to actually talk to each other was at the end of the night. Yeah. And it was like, hey, I'm Jake. And she was like, hey, I'm Ashby. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I worked, I ended up getting that job at the, at the church working nice. in the Children's Learning Center. And she worked upstairs. Um, so I had... She has a, a stocking background. I guess I do too. <laughs> yeah. um, so I knew... Because I got to the church before her, I started realizing the patterns of when she was coming in. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I'm going to be early. I'm gonna be the person who opens the door for her every morning. And I'm going to get the elevator for her every morning. So that little like 30 second walk from front door to mm-hmm. elevator, mm-hmm. I was sowing seeds. Yeah. I was like, hey, like, what, so what's your, what's your story? Mm. How, how, what are you going to do today? And you're just kind of like <laughs> planting the seeds. And... We started doing some like group hangouts and I finally, I was like, Hey, like I want to, I want to be more intentional about this. Mm -hmm. Let me ask this girl to coffee, like, and just kind of get to know where she is and let her know where I am. Uh, cause I too, like I didn't plan seven years of being single, but I had committed to a year. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted a year just to fix myself, make sure I was, I was good. Smart. 
Oh, I and that. yeah, I, <laughs> I asked her to coffee and I, I want you to tell your perspective on this because I feel like it's, it's better from your side. He asked me to coffee upstairs and like we had a coffee area in the second floor and he just casually was like, oh, would you like to get a coffee? And I being the, in the position that I was in and hadn't dated for so long, I just asked him a million questions after that. I said, oh, what do you mean coffee? Grilled. Are you trying to date me? Like I asked him like literally probably 30 questions. She asked me if, I, if my intentions were marriage. <laughs> We're not even dating. I asked her to get a cup of coffee. Oh my god! <laughs> and you still went to coffee. Good for oh, yeah, you. Man. Both my intentions you were marriage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes. And so you go on a coffee date. Yeah. He answers your thirty questions at least semi appropriately. Um, and yeah. yeah. And now, when did you? How long did you date? Like officially? Yeah. So we we dated for ten months. Um, ten months of dating which if you count the time before that, it was more, but officially boyfriend and girlfriend, 10 months. And then we were engaged for six months. Six months. Six months. Yeah. Yeah. And then got, got hitched. Got married yeah. and yeah. had babies and then yeah. moved to Florida. <laughs> yeah. So you move from Virginia back down to Florida, have, and you have two amazing sons. And how, how old is the oldest now? He's six. Six. So, okay. And you're, you're doing your family thing. Let's talk about ministry for a little bit. And cause as a couple, I hear you were in the learning center, you were working at the church as well. And then you're, you're moving away from that, but then now you're coming back into ministry. Um, what's your journey in that? Like, let's talk about the local church. Let's talk about ministry. Um, from previous in Virginia, good, bad, and ugly. And then what God has been doing to bring you back into these moments of serving a local community of faith. What has that been like for you? Well, I worked on staff as the assistant um, to the senior pastor for about nine years. I started off part-time guest relations, okay. which was helping like if we had guest speakers or anything like that. Um, and then I graduated up to helping the assistant. Okay. Um, and it was good. I will say, I think being so young in it, like right away, I went in it, into it more of like pleasing people mm. rather than yeah. like really what I felt like the Lord wanted me to do mm. or also holding so tight to that. So yeah. like I was gun ho I'm going to stick to the course. Like, this is what yeah. I feel like I need to do. This is what I'm doing. The Lord will open doors if it means elsewhere. But I was very much like held my, the reins really tight on that. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt like my time in ministry up there was really beneficial to future. Okay. Um, I think I learned a lot. I think I got to see a lot, um, good and bad. Sure. Things that, I wouldn't do in ministry um, and things that we're walking through now that we get to see, okay, well, we didn't really love that part and we didn't really feel like that's like what the Lord's calling us to do. Um, so we're doing things differently now. And um, it's been able to give us like a, a different perspective than mm -hmm. coming into it, having not known any of it yeah. really. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, because it was a larger church. You yeah. Know? So, it, I mean, it was what, so many thousand yeah. people. And so, and you were in the, that upper echelon of, mm -hmm. of leadership. And so, at those levels, it's a different ball game and it comes with different challenges. Yeah. But I think it is important to talk a little bit about that because it has shaped you. Yeah. It's made you more sensitive yes. to things, it made you more aware of things, good and bad. Yes. Like this was right, but this was not as right. And, you know, I think through the ages, churches are learning and figuring those things out. Uh, so when we look at, you know, your, your upbringing and your life and, and the trajectory, it shaped your ministry. Yeah. Same way the beginning portions of ministry, when you're serving others that are leading the ministry and you're inside of serving that you, you, you're shaped yeah. and it, and it develops the way and style that of how you will do things. And so I think that's important, you know, for people to hear from you all. And so what about you, Jake, you, you were serving up there. 
different way, yeah. but you were exposed to that. Yeah. Uh, what, what were your thoughts or maybe you're just your feelings towards how that shaped you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, like when I first started going to, to church in general, I wanted to be all over it. I mm -hmm. wanted to be involved in everything. Mm -hmm. um, I knew because of my testimony that like everything else in this world didn't hold the weight that, mm. you know, Jesus does and the church yeah. has. Yeah. So I just, I wanted to join the mission. That was it. My goal was I will one day be able to champion and help run in ministry and whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, so I always had that mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was back home here, uh, like a position opened up and I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> it's me. I, this is my, this is yeah. my whole purpose. God, you finally brought it. Like wow. I, I see what's happening and somebody else got the position mm. and I was like, man, what? Yeah. Wait a minute. God, what, why, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. And I, if you know anything about, you know, being called to ministry, you know that that happens a lot. Yeah. And you can easily set yourself up mm -hmm. for disappointment if you're doing it in your own strength. So good. And so good. the same thing transitioned up to Virginia. So I went up there, went to the Bible college knowing, hey, I have a calling in my life. But I didn't know how that would play out. Yeah. And I wanted to have my hand in it. Mm. So, you know, I would any chance that I had to volunteer, oh, I put my hand up because mm. this is going to open a door for me. Mm. Mm. This is going to put a position mm. available for me. Mm. And I was trying to almost force myself in. Yeah, wow. And it was very humbling, <laughs> you know, to watch people all around me who weren't doing the same things that mm. weren't. You talked about Mary and Martha uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, and yeah. just the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. um, I was the person who was doing everything. Yeah, you were Martha. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was doing everything that I could because I thought that's how that's how the door opens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you'll you'll get to rest on the other side. Mm. And if you just keep doing these things and keep working at it and working at it and working at it, the door will eventually open for you. <laughs> and some doors open. Sure. But we prayed about them and they mm -hmm. didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And it honestly, it wasn't until I stepped back. Yep. That's, that's it. And then that door opened and it was this, this role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just like looking back, I'm like, man, if I could talk to myself in those seasons mm. and just say, dude, just sit back. Yeah. Like enjoy what God's doing. Yeah. Don't burn yourself out. You know, but at the same time, because of those moments, I can now look back and go, okay, yeah, that's, that's what God was teaching me in those seasons. But I did everything I could to, in my mind, build mm. the church. I mm. wanted to reach as many people as possible. Yeah. Because of my testimony, I've been always told, uh, or I, when I first, mm -hmm. Uh, when I first had my my moment with God, when I felt like I was called to ministry, yeah, I felt like the word specifically for me was I was going to help bring light to the darkness mm. and take people out of dark places into the light. Yeah. So I had the right intention. Yeah. But with, I want to say, the wrong way of going about it. Yeah. Um, you know, trying. Hundred percent. I I think that. One, that that humbling and stuff, um, as tough as it is to wait like that and not... One, when you try to force it, mm -hmm. uh, the selfish ambition <laughs> yeah. that sometimes... And, and you have, like, it's not malicious. Yeah. But there's, like, an intent to see heaven fuller. Right. God, I could do this. Put me at it. And he's like, you're not ready. And that's what you would look back and, and tell yourself is to go, hey, I wasn't ready yet. God knew you weren't ready yet right. because he needed you to release it, yeah. to surrender and to realize, mm -hmm. okay, I'm completely just going to do what you want me to do and I'm not going to try to force myself in. I think it's encouraging for those maybe that are listening, even not m maybe just m ministry, but when you are trying to do it yourself, I, I just, I've been there too. I think we all go through those seasons of maturing until we finally get to a place where like, I can't do this anymore. And he goes, perfect. 
here you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've been waiting on all along, yeah. you know? And so that, that is just resonates with me because that's my life too. You know, that's my life too. And so well, let's talk about how it has shaped you both in the current ministry. Um, you are leading um, and, and the, the young people of the house, so all of the students um, of which I give you a few of those. I have teenage boys and then young adults. Um, Dream with me for a second. Talk to me about your heart um, for this community, for our neighbor, neighboring community of Northport where you were, you were born and raised and, and just the young people, uh, young people that are, I, you know, I, I sense revival. I mean, we've talked about this, you know, Jake and Ashby, I, I really believe that, that those young people are bringing something yeah. that is, is very, God is going to use them in these days. So would you just share your heart, uh, the, the shaping of your trajectory and who you are? What What is the Holy Spirit putting in you right now for the young people? And, and there's doesn't need to be specific. Just let it flow out of who you are right now and tell me uh, about that. I don't know. What, what, how, how are you being shaped for it? Yeah. Well, I, honestly, I think the, the one thing that <clears throat> we both have talked about and we prayed about when we stepped into this, uh, this role as the young adults and youth pastor mm -hmm. is it's not like a lot of the times you'll see and even you'll see with churches nowadays and, and bigger churches mm -hmm. where it's look at our event, yeah, come be a part of our event, and then the kids come and they go to an event, but when the event goes mm -hmm. away, they go with it. Mm. What I see and what I want to do, God willing, is depth. Amen. I want depth. And I feel like that was the word that God gave me in this role was depth mm. before spreading. Yeah. Because I, when, when we have a solid foundation yeah. and our roots are deep, when those storms come, because you, you and I both know yeah. they're going to come. Amen. Especially yeah. at that age. Yep. Yeah you know, and they're rooted. Yeah. They have a firm identity. Mm. They'll be able to withstand. Yeah. So that really, that's like the, the main thing. Yeah. Is making sure that, Hey, they actually know who Jesus is yeah. for themselves. So good. They're not just in the room and hearing about a man. Mm. They're living their lives Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday with, Jesus. Mm. You know, they're actually walking and talking and praying and learning. Um, you know, cause yeah. life gets crazy. It's so good. Ashby, what about you? I want to speak to that, but I want to hear from you first. Yeah. I think that, um, I think God is so good in the fact that he uses what the enemy meant for evil yeah. for his good. Yeah. And, alone just what Jake and I have like walked through mm. when we didn't know Jesus like he said it was like we lived full lives before we even knew Jesus wow. and we we can both attest to that yeah um and just <clears throat> knowing that at that age it's so um vital for these kids to have somebody to one go to that's like yes. safe and just to be able to talk about anything and everything and sometimes that is the parents and we, you know, would pray and hope that that's the parents. But even if you have great parents, sometimes mm -hmm. you don't want to disappoint them. So you, we want to be those people that like you would, they would feel open to like coming to us. Mm -hmm. And, but anyways, um, so good. and just saying, uh, that everything that we've been through and what they've walked through, sorry, <laughs> Like I kind of went in a circle there. It's perfect. Um, That's good. Yeah, just let it yeah, flow. just That's like good. the test. Honestly, just our testimony and like yeah. everything that we've been through, and that we want to be there for people who are going through or have been through yeah. the same exact thing. So good. Yeah, yeah. I, I just to resonate with you on those things. My, you all very discipleship. Like it's, it's not entertainment. Do you have fun? Absolutely. You two are fun people. I've hung yeah. out with you some now. And, and so like, you're naturally just fun people to be with. Yeah. But your heart, when you say depth and safety, yeah, like you say depth and safety, it really is. That's discipleship. It's, it's bringing them in and going, I want you to survive without me, but yeah. I'm here for you right now in this. And it's, 
it's that cycle of those things as you develop them into like Jesus does with Peter. He's just like with him. Yeah. Uh, and, and then eventually there's a moment where there's a sending or a, hey, I'm going, you got this. I get that from you all. Your leadership is being that which you wish you would have had, being those things in the midst of the darkness that maybe a Josh or others might have been to you. And uh, it, it, I love the discipleship. I love the discipleship and the desire for relationship. And, and of course, I have kids in the ministry. So you're, you're spending time with them apart from a student night. Yeah. And, you know, when you say, you know, depth before breadth, what I've watched happen already in, in the ministry and just in that type of leadership is breadth comes with the depth. Mm. Maybe even sometimes quicker than we want Jesus is like trying to keep the crowds from coming because there's a depth that he's doing, but in that depth that he's building in those disciples, yeah. people pull to it. Yeah, I see that already in your ministry that you've got your, for lack of a better way of saying it, you're 12, but then there's these crowds that are coming and that I think is going to be the thing as your friend I'm praying over you is managing the the Sea of Galilee preaching Sermon on the Mount stuff while taking them over here to pray up on the Mount of Transfiguration, <laughs> like yeah. these different yeah. moments of ministry that I, I sense is happening for you all pretty quickly. But you've you've talked about it, like you've been on this journey for years waiting for the right moment and finally mm -hmm. when you released it, now it shows up. Hey, you're primed. You know, you're in this prime moment of, of making significant impact. And so well, let's talk a little bit more about maybe some future things. Is there anything that's stern in your heart? Uh, what, what are some things to look for? How does somebody support you? I think that's my biggest thing is going, I have a heart for young people. One, I got kids in the men, right? So it's, it would be stupid for me as a parent not to be very for what you're doing. But secondly, I, I, again, I think revival's coming from this generation I think that there are things that I want to get out of the way of so that they can have uh, sooner rather than later. Mm. So how do we support students and young adults? How do we get involved in the ministry doing? How do we include them in the ministry we're doing at times? Uh, how would you answer that for people listening that want to be a part of that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, prayer. Yeah. So good. You know, I, it can sound Christianese at times, but really it is the foundation. It is, amen. Making Most sure that, you know, you're you're praying and, and talking to God. Mm. Um, but if you do feel like you have a an, a yearning, that's the right word, earning, yearning. Like, sure. Let me make up words. I've been doing it all That's weekend. all right. It's great. Uh, but if you feel like you have a calling um, to support the ministry, then first and foremost, mm -hmm. make sure you pray about it. But two, uh reach out to me, mm -hmm. reach out to Ashby and we can see like where you would fit in. Yeah. Uh, we do, we need volunteers. Yeah. Uh, we've had a glimpse of what is to come uh, with the youth ministry and we need, we need help. Yeah. A lot <laughs> of know, kids. Uh, we don't want it to be something that it just ends up taking off and mm -hmm. then we're not able to facilitate. Um, and then it's back down and, you know, within that people can get hurt, people can get it's mistreated and we don't want that. Yeah. Uh, you heard my heart with, um, for volunteers this weekend. And the last thing I want is someone to be used and abused, chewed mm -hmm. up and spit out and replaced. Yeah. I want, if somebody's coming in to serve, I want them to know that they are loved so good. and that they just as much as anybody else in the room need that relationship with Jesus first. Yeah. And that's what I want to facilitate with anybody that's going to support mm -hmm. the ministry. Um, but yeah, we're, we're always looking for help. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I think too, we've talked about it a few times, is it's not even just about the kids. The kids go back to their families. Yeah. And yeah. so we want to find a way where we can also get the parents involved in some aspect, not on the night of, sure, but in some communication aspect, because these kids are coming in with prayer requests of, mm. Um, depression, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that comes with suicidal thoughts, like yeah. all of that. How can we help equip the parents as yeah. well? It's not just the children coming in on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. They're battling heavy, heavy stuff. And yeah. as a parent ourselves, we know that we carry our children's burdens as yeah. well. So like we're thinking of future things, like how can we gather the parents yes. and, and see what questions do you guys have? 
how can we help you? How can we help your children? How can we help your family unit? Because that is kingdom. Amen. Kingdom yeah. is so family good. unit. So it's not just helping the individual, but helping yeah. the unit of family. I love that. Again, it's just discipleship with you guys. <laughs> like It's all the time. It, when you're talking about volunteers, what you're saying is I need more people to help me disciple. Because yeah. right. I can't get to them all. And that's yeah. why you want to make sure that they're taken care of and close to Jesus and healthy because you need their help in discipling these students that you can't get to all of them and then saying, okay, hey, families, this is the best discipleship discipleship mechanism is the home. Yeah, How do we come alongside you and do that? Yeah. I, I think that people as they're listening, one, they can email you, jake at liftchurch.com. Yeah. Just get plugged in, whatever that may look like, if they're feeling like a call to that. Uh, again, first and foremost, prayer. And we believe that wholeheartedly on this team and in this church, um, prayer. Prayer is yeah. everything. We start and begin by seeking his presence in all things. And so I think that we have to do that or it's just as you tried to do it yourself and we talked about it in your yeah. testimony, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be yeah. him. Uh, but then like let them reaching out to you, jake at liftchurch.com and maybe getting plugged in. And then I think we as parents need to be figuring out how we connect with you. Maybe not just a volunteer, because I love my my kids having their space. So yeah. I'm thankful for it. Yes. Uh, they need it. I agree that I'm the main discipler. That's the most impl- important place I pastor. But them having you all has changed them. And I'll tear up, but man, like it's important. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's important. But my thought is, is like, how do I come in as a dad? Mm-hmm. And like, and, and how do I... Uh, get with you all and figure out how to do these things because my kids are asking questions. Things I never, like my son the other day, I'm, and, and I'll, I'll just share this with you, like I have to discipline a son. And my natural thing is I got to take your cell phone from you. And his first response to me is like, well, dad, what happens if there's an active shooter? Hmm. Hmm. Right. I never in my life, like that's the things that m- these kids are dealing with. Mm-hmm. Is like that's the pressures of the society we live in and I'm going, Oh my, that's what you, that's in your mind. Mm. Yeah. That's a pressure you live with every day that you're going to school yeah. and just these stresses that are so different and so unique with social media and we could go on and on. Yeah. As a parent, I need to be with you. I need to be with other parents. Yeah. I need to, so I'm, I'm, I'm just challenging us as parents to go, man, we, I want to, I want you to know you're not alone, that we're in this with you. And, and that's kind of my heart for you all. Is there any final things that you'd say maybe to people that are listening today? Anything on your heart? If you wanted to leave them with an encouragement or maybe just something that the, the Holy Spirit's stirring in you in our conversation, I want to give you time to do that. Is there anything? Um, I will say something. Before Please. we took on the, the ministry role and position, uh, the Lord just gave me a vision mm. when I was praying about it all. And it's like it was a vision of people walking up, and it was me and Jake or whoever it was, but it was not them looking at us and it was us pointing them to Jesus. And I really think that um, in the church world, a lot of the time we want people to look at us Mm. and we want to have the it saying and we want to do the hype thing. Um, But it really is just about Jesus. And I know here at Lyft, like that's what we believe, but that is what we believe as individuals, it's not about us. It's not about what we're doing. So it's literally pointing these kids to Jesus because we're not going to be here the whole time for them. You That's know, right. like we'll be here when they're in the ministry and when they're attending youth, but when they go to their schools, we're not able to physically be there or they're yeah. going home or they're graduated or anything like that. And so in all of our lives, who are we walking with? Hmm. Jesus. So, so who's pointing us to we have to be pointing these kids to Jesus. So good. So I just wanted yeah. to encourage like families in that too. So, so good. Jake, yeah. what do you have? Many thing? Yeah, honestly. So one thing that was kind of on my mind um, when I was sharing what we were talking about is, you know, if there's somebody who ends up watching this, who mm. maybe their testimony is, they know that they're, they're supposed to be in, in vocational ministry, mm. but there's not a door for them yet. Mm. So just submit it to God. Yeah. You know, don't do what I did. Don't try to force yourself <laughs> in because all you're doing is setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. And what comes with that is a lot of disappointment. Mm. It comes with a lot of heaviness and burden, uh, and it can cause a lot of offenses. Yeah. Wow. 
Um, so if you just make the first things first, like, hey, am I good with God? Mm. Mm. Your calling is to be a follower of Jesus. Mm. That's so good. It's not to be a That's youth it. pastor. Amen. It's not to be a, a pastor of a church. It's not to be a, a musician. Yeah. Your calling, first and foremost, is to be a follower of Jesus. Yep. The other things, let God take care of it. Yes. You know? So that's yeah. that's just kind of what I wanted to share because I know there are a lot of people who they want to strive for a role or a position. And it's, can I be completely honest, it's not what it's all cracked up to be sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Like you're, yeah. <laughs> people have told me that. Yeah. And even in the season that I was in, I was like, yeah, right, dude. Like yeah. I, I see these pastors and they, <laughs> they don't work. They go play golf and they do this. And <laughs> you can cut that out. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's a stereotype. But the reality of it is like, yeah. people do think that way. I know. And it's not. It's not. It's you wear a lot of people's burdens. Yeah. And you wear your own as well. Yeah. But, you know, it's, and I'm still new to this. Yeah. There's no place that I'd rather be because I know that I'm supposed to be in this mm -hmm. role. Yeah. But don't force your way into it. Because yeah. if you did somehow force your way into a role to open up mm. and it wasn't God's timing, only bad things will come out of that. Yeah. And, you know, then you're setting yourself up for more disappointment, more failure, more hurt, more offense. Um, so, yeah, I would just say don't don't force yeah. it. That's so good. Let God do it. I think you're both saying very similar things, and I think everybody's called to um, make much of Jesus mm -hmm. um, in homes, uh, at a grocery store, in whatever vocation you find yourself in. You can be a, for lack of a better term, quote unquote, a pastor. Yeah. Because you can make much of Jesus, and that's what we're all called to be. We're all of a royal priesthood, scriptures would teach us. Yeah. So we're all part of that moment. Uh, you have said that we vocationally get to do this. It it is a it's a cross we bear. It is the opposite of of who I am in many ways. Mm. I'm an introvert, and and yet I'm in front of hundreds of people every single week talking, and it's like this is not what I would naturally gravitate towards. But God puts us in these positions that help to bring glory to His name, and I, I think it's. One of the things as I'm listening to both of you is just to encourage you to that as hard as it is, it is also such a gift. Yeah, It is such a gift and a privilege to serve the bride uh, of Christ and to get to do that in ways that, yes, in my own strength are crushing, mm. but in, under his grace are beautiful. Yeah. And um, it, it brings about an appreciation for the cross for me. That, you know, if I would have done the thing that would, I loved and was easier, I wouldn't have such an appreciation for that suffering. It is in the sufferings yeah. of life and the difficulties and challenges and, and that you go, okay, man, it's so much more beautiful what Christ has done. I just appreciate you all. Uh, I love all that you've said. I love getting to do life with you. Uh, there's so many more conversations to be had. I think this is a good introduction for everybody to get to know you some. We didn't even talk about parenting and your kids and just your <laughs> hobbies. I mean, you just like float in front of us a surfboard and we don't talk in <laughs> any way about the fact that you surf, but there's more time to come. I think it's a good opportunity for us to kind of finish things today. Would you do me a favor, Jake? Sure. Would you pray for people? And yeah. we just end in that way. I think it's a great way to, to close things up today. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you for the opportunity that you give us each and every single day to be a witness for you. But Father, I pray right now for the people who are out there that may be trying to force their way into positions or roles, whether it's in life or ministry, God, I pray that mm. they would check their heart first, Lord, that they would make sure that they're right with you in your relationship with you. God, I thank you for Pastor Micah, for Lift Church, the healing ministries that have come out of this church, God, mm. the place that it's given us and my family to really take time to heal and seek you. Mm. Lord, I pray that this message would bless somebody, whether you have a similar testimony or you could relate in any way. And Father, I pray that in your hands, it would change somebody's heart today. Mm. 
It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you both very much. Yeah, man. Great time.